Hello everyone. Welcome back to Talking with Mrs. M. Oh, the week is over. The week is over. And that's that's a good thing, right? <laughs> that's a good thing after this week. That's a really good thing. So why do we keep saying after this week? Well, you know that some things had happened here in the U.S. Um, things that we thought would never happen have happened, right? And it's been a tough week. It's been a very tough week. And there have been some definite lines drawn in the sand. Um, I drew a line in the sand on my personal Facebook page. And one of my, my kiddos, uh, one of my former kiddos on there, asked about the line. And asked also about well, how, how do you know what to believe anymore with all the misinformation that we get what do we do? What do we do to make up our minds and to know that we've made up our minds with the best possible information that we could get? So that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about how do you do that? How do you get the best information for you? And how do you make up your mind and what you believe in? Um, I gave out an assignment at the beginning of the school year and the assignment was write a credo what is what do you believe in <laughs> that's what that is a credo sorry <laughs> what do you believe in right what do you believe in and I found that my seniors couldn't tell me what do you mean you don't know what you're passionate about you don't know what you'll stand for and that's been on my mind since I heard from my student at the beginning of Thursday. So how do we make up our mind? How do we find out what's true and what's not? Well, in class, I've taught for many, many years bias. I have taught for many, many years what makes a good site, what makes a, a good resource. And we say site now because a lot of times let's be let's let's cut the crap. We look up things online. We don't go to print very often anymore. Um, most of the time we're going online. So how do we find what's online? Because anybody can make a website nowadays. Anybody. And if they know how to use words, they'll sound like they know what they're talking about. And there's the problem. There's the problem. So, like I've taught for my children for many, many years, let's look at what makes a good website, what makes interesting, interesting language. Um, first off, websites. Websites are pretty easy to know whether or not you're getting accurate information. I say easy. Easy-ish. <laughs> Easy-ish. So websites, if it lands, if it ends with a .gov or a .org, um, a .edu, most of the time the information you're going to get from those pages will be factual. All right. Now I say most of the time, and I'll talk about that in just a moment, why that's not the case. I don't say a .com would be a valid resource. Now, can it end up being a valid resource? Yes, we'll just have to do some extra investigation in order to make sure. Um, but a .com, anybody can write a web page, anybody can create a web page, so you could have any information on there. Point in case I'd like to point out Wikipedia. I love Wikipedia. I get information from Wikipedia. I'm not gonna play, all right? I ain't gonna play. I get information from Wikipedia. I look it up. Even my college papers were written with some Wikipedia information because I would think I'd know what I was talking about or what I wanted to know. And I'd go to Wikipedia and I'd get the little breakdown synopsis of it, right? And just like the old, the old encyclopedia days for me. <laughs> That's what this reminds me of. That's what it was supposed to be. Um, so I'd go and I look at it and then I look at where they got their information from. And then I go to those links to really set my research for my research papers. Um, but Wikipedia, as much as I love Wikipedia, Wikipedia is flawed because anyone can edit. 
I am a, or used to be, a Halloween Horror Nights fan. I am a Halloween fan. I am a Haunted Attraction fan. Um, I used to be a die-hard Halloween Horror Nights fan, and I had a group of friends that were die-hard Horror Nights fans. And one of them was, was funny and a prankster, and one of them actually went into the Wikipedia page and listed their self as an icon for Halloween Horror Nights. They were never an icon for Halloween Horror Nights. It stayed there for two years. Two years, guys! <laughs> two years that page had inaccurate information regarding Halloween Horror Night icons, right? We can't really go by what Wikipedia is saying. So if you look something up and it's there in Wikipedia, okay, but take it with a grain of salt, okay? Do your own research. So what does that mean, Miss M? Um, what does that mean I have to do? Okay. So like I said, .gov, eh, they're, they're, for the most part, you'll get great information from there, accurate information. Um, .orgs. .orgs and .edus. We're going to start into a bias. We're going to start talking about biasness. Now, I now know where I can get information, but you said .org and .edu. What's wrong with those? Well, people pay for school, and nonprofits want you to pay to keep them in business. So the language and their biasness is going to be set up in a different manner than, say, a .gov. Um, those two websites, like I said, for the most part, you'll find pretty factual information, but they can have a bias depending on what they're trying to do. Okay. So bias, this is the biggest one for me. This is the one that I really, really depend on for my ability to go, okay, I believe this is true. Words are important. Words are so important. <laughs> okay. The way that we speak to each other, the words that we choose, says a lot about what we know. If you are looking something up and the article in which you're reading contains a lot of opinionated statements and a lot of heavy connotative words, mm, I wouldn't really use that piece of information as my end-all, be-all information of how I'm going to make up my mind, okay? I could see that they have an opinion, and okay, that's how people believe. That's what I can look at that from. That's what the information I can get from that. Okay, that's how people believe. But if they're really, really heavy with connotation, and again, <laughs> We teach you guys this in school for that reason. We don't want you guys to not know right from wrong. We don't want you guys not to know like what to believe when you get here. So connotation was one of those things that for me, I always had to have in my curriculum because words are important. <laughs> okay, words are important. And connotation sets up so many things. Um, for the audience, using the right word can set up a tone, right? So how does this all wrap into finding what I believe? Well, if somebody has a lot of negative connotation to their their article, they have heavy bias in their article, they might have positive connotation in their article. Their words are skewed to manipulate you. Please set in with that word right there. They set up those words to manipulate you. Writers know what they're doing. People who publish things know what they're doing. People who speak know what they're doing. And there are words that are chosen very purposefully. Okay? So, if somebody's trying to manipulate me, Maybe it's just my rebellious streak, but I ain't going to listen. You don't get to manipulate me, right? 
So if I am reading an article that has rhetoric that is going to manipulate the way I think, I'm going to go to a different article and get some more information. All right. I'm never going to tell you how to believe. Never going to tell you how to believe. That's not my place. It's not my path. That's yours. You get to decide, right? What I will tell you, though, is that there are people out there that don't have the best interest of you in mind, but will make it seem... We like also have this problem that once we believe something to be true, we only look up things that kind of enforce that, right? So I'm going to also challenge you that if you already think you know something to be true, go look again. Go find out. Go look where the money's. Where is the money? Where is the money? I can't harp that enough. Where's the money? People, um, when you're looking at research, medical research, any type of research, look at who paid for the study. If the study was paid for by somebody that would profit from the research being positive, or somebody that would profit from the research being negative, then you know that the research probably was a little skewed. Or at least the way that we were told about the research could be a little skewed. Again, words are important. So I not only look up in, in the article that I'm reading, I mark all the words that give me a feeling, right? I also look at where the money is. Where's the money? Who's going to profit from this? Who's going to profit from this study? Did they have anything to do? Was it one of their writers that wrote this journal entry? Do they own the magazine that published the study? Are they trying to get it out in front of everybody for a reason? Is that reason anything connected to money? Or is that reason connected to the better? You get to of choose man. whatever you want. And that's also the uncool part of life, right guys? Is that you gotta make decisions. And some of those decisions are hard. And for all my kiddos out there that have asked me about adulting <laughs> and you guys have wanted me to do videos on all that kind of stuff, I'll do those. I'll do those. Your uh, adulting tip right now is that you're never gonna get the greatest you're never gonna get the greatest choice. I will say not never, okay? Not never. There might be occasions in your life where you're like, do you want cheesecake or do you want sushi? Because those are two great choices in my book, okay? Cheesecake and sushi, right? Oh my goodness. Not a cheesecake sushi. That would be gross. Yeah. <laughs> but in adulthood, you actually get to have choices. And unfortunately, most of the time those choices just suck. <laughs> they just do. You know, you've got to choose one bad decision or another bad decision. How do I make that choice? How do I figure out which bad decision to make? <laughs> that sounds awful, right? You got to go with where's the money? Who funded? Who funded what the information that I'm looking at? What words are they using? Are they using manipulative words so that way I would do what they want me to do? And does it make me feel like if I choose this, it would be okay? Like I'm not destroying somebody if I choose this, right? Those three things. That's what I do. And that's what I've done most of my life. Nope, it's not been hard, easy. It's not been easy. It's matter of fact, been hard most of the day. Okay, most of the time. But guys, there are people out there that put out information to manipulate you, to get you to believe one way. All right, they put out misinformation that is just enough factual information that it's like, huh, that might actually have happened but there's a couple of key points missing. Get the big picture. Look at both sides. Look at both sides. Do not, do not give yourself the ability to feed one of your biases. 
you how know do it I, exists. How do I believe? <laughs> oh, sorry. I just thought about one that always gets me. I see these pictures on uh, social media where it's like, here's a quote, and it's got like a picture of Morgan Freeman. <laughs> or my favorite one was like, it's the picture of Abraham Lincoln, and the quote says, um, people will turn on each other for the internet one day. Abraham Lincoln. And people are sharing it. I'm like, dude, you, you know that Abraham, there wasn't an internet when Abraham Lincoln was born, right? You know that, right? Yeah? Okay. So there's a lot of times where people will look at a picture and because it has a famous person attached to it, they assume, they assume that that's actually a quote from them or they assume that that's exactly what they thought. Go look it up for yourself. Go look it up for yourself. Snopes.com. Snopes. I know Snopes isn't 100%. Please don't come at me with that. But I will say Snopes, for the most part, hasn't let me down when I needed to know whether something was a hoax or not. Okay? Don't believe things just because they're posted on the internet. You know this. You know this. So stop sharing it. Okay? Stop believing in it. When you hear something even on the news, you've got to do your research. You've got to do your research. And if you're one of my babies, I know you know how to do that. <laughs> I taught you that, okay? I know you know how to do that kind of stuff. And if you're not one of my babies, you can do it. It's not that hard. You do it all the time. Oh my goodness, I got a headache. WebMD. <laughs> right? So come on. Oh, until next time, be happy, be safe, wear your mask, wash your hands, and stay away from people that are gross. I love you with all my heart. <laughs>